Hey, welcome back to our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia. My name's Larry. I was asked if I could strip a set of four of these child size Oak Windsor chairs. I said I would. Let me show you what we found. We've talked about this before and I, obviously I talked about it with a client before I did it, but whenever you strip paint from furniture you never have any idea what's underneath. Lots of times there's stains, there's damage, there's bondo, you just never know. And then sometimes stripping the paint itself can be problematic where the pigment or the dye in the paint then leaches into the wood. In this case we have a, uh, an oak chair, oak is obviously an open grained wood, and at one point it had a green paint job and then it was painted red over top of that. The red paint came off, there was some dyeing of the wood with the red paint, but I was able to get that off with some sandpaper and a little bit of elbow grease. But we've got a problem with the green paint, and let me show you. And this is what we're faced with. We've got green paint that's penetrated into the open grain of the wood all over this chair. You can see it here along the open grain of the front of the chair, the open grain of the turnings. It's basically all over it. And then when we look at the underside, the underside was painted and of course this was probably not finished and the paint color has just dissolved into the wood. And this is going to be kind of a childish explanation of what we're dealing with. But if you can imagine these uh, large multicolored straws, which I stole from my grandkids by the way, are the, um, is the wood, the fibers of the wood. This is where water would transpose up, up the plant, up the tree. When you have paint on the flat part, you can sand it off and all is well. But when you have open grain, the paint gets into the open grain. And when you turn a piece, what you're doing, in effect, is spreading out through your cut where the openings are and the paint will smear into it. So usually on turnings, you have a lot of it. So it's usually end grain and turnings that soak up the paint and that's exactly what we're dealing with here. Our client, who's a wonderfully nice lady, is emotionally attached to these chairs. Her children grew up with them and she'd like to have them refinished so they match the room that she's going to have them in so her grandchildren can play on them. So we're going to try to refinish these despite the stubborn paint stains that are on here. And I think it's going to be an interesting project, and I hope you come along with us. So let's get to work. Well, the client uh, has picked a, a dark brown. She wants a dark brown with some, a little bit of red in it. And that, to me, is Van Dyke brown. So the first thing we're going to do is put a coat of Van Dyke brown oil stain on this. This chair has been sanded to 120. It's going to suck the stain up, but that's exactly what I want it to do because we've got so much disparate color and so much green that the more color that we can get on top of that, the easier it's going to be for us to conceal whatever shows through. So here we go. I think that's going to give her what she wants. All right, let me get the stain on this. Well, that's what we have after the first coat of stain. I think that's uh, very close to what she described to me. I'll, I'll insert a picture here of a mantle that she wanted me to try to match the color of them. You'll see they're pretty close. So let's give this stain some time to dry and we'll see if we have to conceal any more colors here.
two coats of sealer and I've sanded between coats. I think you can see that we've got a really nice result. I'm very happy with the legs. There's a little bit of green that's remained on the seat. Now there's two ways of handling this. Green and red make brown. So when you're dealing with a situation where you've got a green cast to this brown seat, you can spray a light coat of red toner on it and it will usually kill the green. And in reverse, if it was red, you could spray green toner on it and it will kill the green. And that's going to be our ultimate last resort. But I think what I want to do is to use some Van Dyke Brown glaze on this for two reasons. One, to see how it kills this little last bit of green that we have. And two, just to give it some more character. Uh, as it is, this chair has lots of tones in it, lots of character, but let's see if we can give it a little bit more depth of color. I like the depth of color it's given us. I don't know if it's going to take care of that last little bit of green hue. And as I was playing around with the glazes, I put a little bit of red mahogany stain into the glaze and that seems to have been what tipped it over so now we've got just a nice chocolate brown showing on that seat. That's what she's looking like so far. Well it's a couple of days later and I think we got it. We spent the last couple of days shooting on a total of three additional coats of lacquer. So there's three coats of sealer, three coats of lacquer. There's a you know obviously the original coat of oil stain there's two coats of glaze and lots of pigment touch up. I think we got it done. I sometimes get comments that the people that watch the channel don't have access to spray equipment and how can they do this with the equipment they have at home. In this case you could have done exactly what I did with a stain and then gone ahead and sealed it with a spit coat of shellac then applied your pigment and with the pigment on you probably want to get a spray can of shellac and just spray over those spots that you put the pigment on to lock it in before you put your coats, you know, your uh, your top coats on. You could also use what's called a gel stain and those are thick stains, they're polyurethane based generally and they're designed to stay on the surface of the wood and they're, you know, they're pretty opaque. So those are a couple of suggestions if you're tackling a project like this at home and you don't have the equipment that I do. Well anyways, we're going to uh, get this photographed and off to the owner and see if she gives it a thumbs up. If she does, I got three more to do and uh, I think she will. I think she'll like it and I hope you enjoyed this. I thought I was probably going to have to use a little bit more spray toner than I did but we were able to get it done without that. And perhaps as the painted furniture fad begins to wane, people start stripping furniture down to natural wood you know what we found here and uh, presented here will be helpful to more than one of you. So anyways from our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia. Best regards, thanks for watching, take good care and remember it's just wood, color and some shiny stuff. We'll see you next video. Bye.